Good evening, Chicago, and welcome back to Little C TV. On behalf of the one out of every 110 children in our nation suffering with autism, thank you for joining in on our dialogue and tuning in to the only live autism show in Chicago. Tonight, we have the pleasure of hosting Dr. L. Ahmed Mograbi. Dr. Ahmed El Magrabi is a clinical director at Northwest Community Hospital. He's also an assistant clinical professor at the University of Illinois College of Dentistry and a member of the American Dental Association. Dr. El Magrabi has helped Northwest Community Hospital provide valuable dental services to many underserved residents of the Northwest suburbs for the past three years. Recently, he led a dental assessment at Little City Foundation where more than 200 residents received dental exams from himself and other volunteer dental professionals. The dental assessment allowed for a grand opening of the Little City Center for Health and Wellness on May 10th. With the recent opening of Little City Center for Health and Wellness, Dr. El Magrabi will oversee the dental care of hundreds of children and adults with autism and other intellectual and developmental disabilities. Dr. El Magrabi, thank you so much for joining us this my, evening. My pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Likewise. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about Little City Center for Health and Wellness and how you got involved? Um, my involvement actually has been since day one when I took the position with Northwest in 2007, actually. Um, from day one, I mean, we've been involved with meetings with uh, different vendors, different suppliers, looking at grant opportunities, meeting with people who are crunching numbers, um, looking at facilities, obviously, and my team and myself were always looking at how can we help the little city residents in the meanwhile as, as this is actually happening. Um, and one of the things we thought about was approaching the Harper College Hygiene Program, which we are in good relationship with, mm -hmm. and we discussed doing caretaker training and possibly doing Give Kids a Smile on campus for Little City, which we did a couple years ago. What was that, I'm sorry? It's called Give Kids a Smile. Oh, Give Kids a Smile. It's, okay. Yeah, it's uh, part of National uh, Children Dental Month in February. We mm -hmm. went, actually, it was very successful. We went there, we did oral hygiene instructions for the mm -hmm. residents. We passed out toothbrushes, it was very successful, but the more we brainstormed about what we can do, it always came back to the f we need a facility to actually do the work. Um, and then when we finally were able to get all the numbers together, we had to find out how big of a facility do we need, what do we need uh, as far as staffing, do we need a hygienist, do we need more dentists, uh, which is why we did the assessment a couple of months ago and we screened all 200 residents and just looked to find out if their needs are more restorative based or they need more hygiene or they need emergency based treatment. And the conclusion that we came up with was that they need more hygiene more than anything, which is why we hired Patty, who's a wonderful individual. I've known her for three years. And Patty's a dental hygienist. Patty's a dental hygienist. She's been with us since the first seven years, but and I'm just glad to see the clinic up and running and everything finally happening. So. And can you tell us why you said dental hygienist is really right. important? Why is preventative care so important? Um, Especially with like dental and oral care. Sure, absolutely. Well, prevention is is always obviously better than treatment, but um. It's a population that obviously has h um, high needs for as far as them having a lot of, you know, bad bad oral habits such as uh, grinding their teeth, uh, pica, pouching. Um, so even education is is a huge part of it. Mm. Um, Excellent. Well, it looks like we have our first caller on the air. Oh, we'll just hold on then. Okay. <laughs> um, how will the, how will the Center for Health and Wellness change oral care for, you know, little city residents, primarily? Uh, like, I guess, what do you think are the immediate benefits well, for residents of little well, city? Well, I mean, it's it's a multi it's a multi approach. The fact that we were going to start with uh, the care tra the caretaker training, teaching mm -hmm. the caretakers how to teach the residents to brush mm -hmm. their teeth and care for the teeth, working mm -hmm. one on one with mm -hmm. the residents to uh, show them how to take care of their teeth. Uh, working, working with the Harper College Hygiene Program to start the desensitization program, which is getting them used to being in a dental office. So um, then eventually, obviously, doing the, the care for the, the patient's hygiene and the dentistry, which I'll be providing, obviously. So, mm -hmm. um, What exactly will, you, will your role be with it at the center? Um, so we have a dental hygienist, and then you'll be the... Right. I mean, I'm, I'm still the, dental, the director of the Northwest Community Hospital, so I'll be working with Patty to be... So, um, overseeing what she's doing, and then I'll be obviously providing the dentistry. But the dentistry. but we'll be working with her. I've worked with her for quite some time, so it's it's a good working relationship with her. So Excellent. it'll be definitely good. Um, I noticed when you were conducting the dental assessments mm -hmm. a couple months ago that sure. some of our some individuals with autism and other intellectual and developmental disabilities are nonverbal. Sure. So how do you? I mean, I'm afraid of the dentist just sure. in general, and as sure. you know, most people are. Sure. So, you know, hands up, you know, applause uh, to dentists. Sure. How do you re how do you relax some of these patients sure. that are nonverbal sure. especially? Sure. Well, I mean, when you think about 
I mean, how the autistic individual learns, they obviously learn different. And then you see, think about all the stimuli in mm -hmm. a dental from the sights to the smells to the feel of a glove on their face, the, mm -hmm. the taste of the glove on the, in their mouth. Mm -hmm. All these things require that you work with the individual, obviously, and get them used to all these stimuli kind of in a gradual fashion so they ultimately can have a pleasant dental experience with the end result being them being cooperative. Mm -hmm. So it takes just a lot of patience and a lot of them you doing what's called the tell-show-do method, which is kind of familiarizing themselves with, with everything. I mean, before I examine the child, I'll tell them, you know, this is going to be my mirror. You want to hold it, make sure it's not, it's mm -hmm. not going to bother you. And then they hold it. And then they realize, you know, this is not painful. I'll let them proceed with that. Once I'm done with that process, I can, you know, grab my little t um, tooth polisher and tell them, you know what, I'm going to tickle your teeth. You want to feel it? And I'll make them feel it on the back of their hand. All this stuff goes a long way. So mm -hmm. just all these small steps will have them um, have a pleasant dental experience. I remember you took one of your instruments and you're, you tapped... The, you, you took the mirror and you tapped uh, one of our individuals. You're like, doesn't hurt, okay? Right, it doesn't right, hurt. Right. That, and you'll, immediately you'll be, they you'll were be just surprised like, that goes a long way. Yeah, that's excellent. Right. Um, so, what advice would you give to parents who have children with autism about visiting their own dentist? Sure. Uh, the parents play a huge role, obviously, in the care for their child. Um, aside from the fact that when we see the child, that they would provide all the information about what triggers the individual, what are their oral habits, uh, what is their feeding schedule, if they eat a lot of sweets. Um, if they have anything that comforts them, whether it be a toy or a teddy bear or what have you. Aside from all that, I think the biggest role um, the parent can play would be priming the individual for the, the dental care. Um, the dental visit does not start, I think in my opinion, when they walk into the room. It starts way before that from when the parent tells their child, you know, we're going to go see the dentist tomorrow. But what happens, unfortunately, with a lot of individuals is that if the parent has dental phobia, that they start to relay those experiences to the uh -huh. child and the child will start to have what's called um, objective fear as opposed to subjective fear. So if the parent primes the patient for a good dental visit by telling him how good it's going to be, oh, he's going to count your teeth, he's going to he's going to show you pictures, even if the parent goes along the way of buying a book like Dora's first visit to the dentist or borrows a pair of gloves and a mirror from the from the dentist to you know orient them about what's going on, maybe even showing them, uh, an, you know, an older sibling having a positive dental experience, all this stuff can definitely help. By the time the child gets to the operatory, they're actually looking forward to having fun with it. So that's a huge role the parent can Not definitely a real, have. Has, has anyone ever looked forward to a dental visit? <laughs> um, absolutely. I mean, if, the, yeah. if they're definitely primed in a, in a good way and they feel like it's going to be a positive experience and, you know, if they walk in, they feel like de the dental team is having fun with it and they're having fun, you know, what else can you, can you ask for, a, for an appointment? So... And I know that the grand opening for the Center for Health and Wellness was pretty big news because sure. uh, right now when we talk about underserved citizens of our community or sure. vulnerable underserved citizens of our community, sure. there are a few places where children and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities can sure. go to for sure. dental and oral care. Sure. Why do you think that's so? Um, a lot of it is not, not a lot of individuals are well, either have the, the extra training to provide care for these individuals, but a lot of individuals don't even just, as bad as it sounds, have the interest in seeing that population. They want to pass it off either to a pediatric dentist or someone who does more of that work, whether it be a hospital clinic or what have you. But the trend is definitely changing. I mean, uh, autism is one out of 150 individuals. So, you know, as a general practitioner, you are going to be more likely to see an individual with autism or special needs. So. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that every so often there's a trend in medicine or dentistry that's changing. And I think this is the current trend. I mean, you're going to have to comfortable, get comfortable seeing those patients. And I think even the last wave of dental accreditation to dental schools, they made that a, a kind of a more strict requirement that dental schools have to have a more solid training program for special care training. So, so the, the trend is definitely changing, obviously, to the better. So. Uh, so what advice would you give to dental students right now about treating or caring for serving individuals no, I, I, I feel old I'm giving advice to the young ones <laughs> um, oh, it looks like we'll we we'll put that on hold looks okay. like we have our first caller caller go ahead you're live on the air hi I had a question um, for the doctor um, I'm not sure how Northwest community got involved with Little City um, and the second part of the question is do you only serve residents at Little City or do you expand your services to others with disabilities in the community Okay. That's a great question. Okay. Um, the partnership with Northwest Community Hospital in Little City started way before I even took the job. Um, it was actually one of the reasons I was actually hired for the position because when I was interviewing and I showed an interest in that field, uh, Ron Buck, who was one of the key people that got the project uh, up and running, 
um, obviously saw that this is something that we can they can use for their for Northwest Community Hospital, and that's why my resume kind of floated to the top. So um, I think a couple of years ago is when they made the partnership actually official, and Bruce Crowther, who was our CEO, was at Little City, and they have a picture of him, Ron, and Sean Jeffers all shaking mm -hmm. hands. That's when the partnership was actually quote unquote official. Mm -hmm. Um, as it stands right now, um, I actually am full-time with Northwest Community Hospital, but I am still mainly at the mobile dental clinic. I will be part-time seeing patients at the Little City Clinic, but I am still involved with the mobile dental clinic, which is a mobile clinic that sees patients in the northwest suburbs area, the Palatine Township, the Wheeling Township, the Elgrove Township. And I think the second part of the question is, do you, have, do you know if Little City Center for Health and Wellness will see uh, individuals with autism and other developmental disabilities outside of Little City. So, for example, just a, m a member of the community who may have autism. That was part, actually part of the uh, of the plan that initially we were going to start with the Little City population and eventually open it up to the bigger population and make it a quote-unquote center of excellence in, in the local area. Right. But for right now, we're going to start with the, the individuals that live on ca at the Little right, City campus absolutely. and other Little City homes right. throughout the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. So, uh, going back to being Professor sure. um, McGravy, oh, <laughs> what would you share with, uh, with dental students right now? Uh, what advice or tips would you give them about um, bedside manner sure. uh, you know, for individuals um, with autism? I would say definitely key is patience, patience, patience. You have to be patient when working with these individuals. Mm -hmm. Um, if you walk in to the appointment with your own agenda of I gotta get through procedures X, Y, and Z, I gotta get through a cleaning, a filling, and uh, x-rays, a lot of times you might be disappointed, but if you walk in with the intention of working with the individual and finding out what they're capable of and what they're not capable of, um, that's obviously the, the better the better approach. Um, like I told you, just taking that extra time to familiarize the individual with what you're doing, and you'll be surprised. I mean, the, all that stuff just goes a long way. By the time the tenth visit comes around, they're going to walk in the chair, sit by themselves, lay lay back, open their mouth, just because they've kind of gotten used to it. Um, Definitely, definitely have fun with it. I mean, feel good, feel good about what you're doing. You know, joke around with them. You'll quickly tell what kind of sense of humor they have. And again, if you're joking and they're having a good time and you're having a good time, it's it's a good dental visit in my opinion. So. Uh, a lot of little city staff have noticed that you have ex you show extraordinary patience okay. with uh, our individuals and. Um, so can you tell us like what kind of drew you? You said this took you, you know, your resume kind of went to the top sure. when they when they were interviewing for dental dental sure. positions. Sure. What drew you what to drew this population? To you know, I think it started a long time ago. Um, I grew up in the Middle East, actually in a third world country, and I saw poverty on a day to day basis. And just my interaction with these people, I just enjoyed kind of working with these people and just working with a needs based kind of population, just because I found it rewarding and thought they had a heart, heart of gold. So. Progressed over to high school, I was volunteering with National Honor Society. Progressed over to college, I was volunteering with the Alpha Phi Omega fraternity. Um, got into dental school, became more aware of the access to care problem, and you know, states like Alaska hurting for dentists, and paired that up with an interest in hospital dentistry and doing operating room cases. The next step took me to Loyola University Medical Center, which is where I did my residency and saw special needs patients, both in clinic and in operating room setting. Worked with the VA population at the Heinz VA. You know, I love the vets. They're the most appreciative people in the world. I think at that point, that's when I realized that's more of my calling, that I enjoy working with the needs-based population, and that's what I was looking for in a job, something where I can, you know, apply that, you know, that interest and passion, and I feel good about what I do, and I enjoy it, so. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Um, what would you say the main differences are between treating children and adults in the needs population, or are there any differences? Um, well, I mean, you, you guys said it best that there's no two individuals that are the same. You just kind of mm -hmm. have to approach um, every individual different. Um, I mean, you hope by the time that someone is an adult, if they have gotten the proper dental care and if they have had a pleasant dental experience from, from the childhood era, that by the time they get to an adult, you know, you don't really have to do much uh, modification for their treatment. So obviously you might have to work with a child a little bit more just to kind of get them you know, obviously desensitized to all the stimuli and operatory and the sounds and the smells and, and it's important for you to have the child obviously have a pleasant experience. If the child comes in scared the first time and you, you know, restrain them and hold them down, the child's going to be scared the next time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, and that's how you have a true dental foe by the time they're an adult. So obviously you have to work with the children a little bit more, I think. So at the Center for Health and Wellness or the dental clinic, are, mm -hmm. is, are there going to be any like um, gases used or is that something that you encourage or that's safe or that 
we should be using for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities because sure. it's harder to sure. communicate with them sure. generally. Sure, speaking. absolutely. Um, I mean, you'll have to figure out, again, what, what works for the individual and what doesn't. I mean, between using oral sedation and between using nitrous oxide to calm some patients down. Um, the operating room also can be a good a good option for someone. Like, if you have someone that comes in with, you know, 20 cavities and a lot of emergency kind of situation, it's not someone you want to really space out 20 dental visits to take care of all these problems. That's mm -hmm. someone that would be really best suited to be, see, be seen in an operating room right away so you can address all these problems at the same time. So it really depends on the child's needs and, you know, how cooperative they are and just your assessment of them and how well you get along with them. So it's, it's not really a... You know, I want, I want to answer for everybody, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think before the Center for Health and Wellness opened, uh, residents and children and adults of Little City had to travel all the way to Rockford mm -hmm. just to, to receive treatment or even any kind of cleaning or, right. or preventative care. So um, do you see a significant, what kind, of, what kind of impact or positive impact do you see this clinic having? now that it's directly accessible sure, to this sure. area. It's actually, it's actually great for us. The people at Milestone are very good friends of us, uh, Kathy Olson and uh, Dr. Jason Grinter. I mean, when we first started doing this, they really took us under our wings and under their wings and really showed us the ropes and took us with them to the Special Care Dentistry Association meeting in, uh, I believe it was San Antonio. So we're definitely not a competitor of theirs at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely they're... It's actually kind of the attitude and vibe I got when I met with these special care dentistry uh, dentists that a lot of them have tips and tricks for you and they want to show you what works and they don't want anyone to kind of reinvent the wheel and mm -hmm. go through le relearning the process all over again. It's definitely a, a small environment. Everyone wants to teach everybody everything. So, But yeah, definitely folks at Rockford and our, um, our big brother. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. great because there's there's such a market. So you don't, and there's been no do, competition. They've been doing it for so long. I mean, right. it's, it's a field that you constantly have to re-educate yourself by going to seminars and lectures and talking with individuals that have been doing it for a lot longer than you so you can find out what works for them and what doesn't work for you. So mm -hmm. it's definitely a partnership. It's not a competition. Can you share us a, a recent success story with um, like a patient that you, you know, that you saved a lot of pain or a lot of money, you know, for this day, just something like a, a story that you recently experienced that you could share with our viewers? I can't we like success stories sure, on the show, sure. just trying to keep it positive. Sure. Um, I really can't think of one person offhand. I mean, the typical person that walks into the, um, the mobile dental clinic really, I don't never have never even seen a dentist, don't even know what's wrong with mm. their teeth, don't even know where to go for help. And the fact that I feel like I can, I can at least triage them from there and tell them you need X, Y, and Z, I can do A, B, and C for you. But you know, the dental school or this other place would be able to help you out more with the rest of your problems. But I can't really think of one person. I mean, I just, I love all my patients, so. You love, how many patients do you have? Um, I think about 2,700 patients total. 2,700 patients? I think, yes, yeah, that's, that's our total patient Is that so an average number that a, a dentist, I guess, sees? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Really? Yeah. That's shocking to yeah. me. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you would like to share? I guess right now, um, with autism being so prevalent, and you know this definitely being an issue, primary health care and oral care mm -hmm. for um, for this population that's growing, unfortunately. Sure. Um, do you have any advice, just that you'd like to share with parents or families or service providers, like uh, people at Little City Foundation or other, you know, similar service provider agencies when it comes to oral care? Sure. Because it, it does. It definitely takes. You know, I don't want to say a village, but it definitely takes a group effort right. to serve the, this population. Well, I mean, I think I touched ba I touched on the, um, the advice to the parents. I touched mm -hmm. on the advice to kind of other colleagues of mine that mm -hmm. you know I might know a little bit more than them. But um, you know, it's it's more it's good news for I think for uh, for people with autism spectrum disorders more than any time, just because there's the research is constantly growing. The fact that they're diagnosing these individuals earlier obviously helps them get help, help at an earlier age and they have like the, their individualized treatment plans. Um, like I said, the fact that this is kind of becoming the new trend in dentistry. When I was in dental school, the trend was, oh, geriatric dentistry and our patients are living longer and you need to be comfortable seeing those patients. I think this is the, the new trend just because of the, the prevalence of it and the fact that they're diagnosing these individuals earlier. So I think the future definitely looks bright. So. Mm -hmm. You mean they're more, they're going to be future more um, professionals in the future sure, who can care sure, for Sure, absolutely, absolutely. That's great. So hopefully we're encouraging future dentists out there sure. to uh, want to serve this population. Mm -hmm. um, what, 
I guess my, you know, we've touched a lot of different topics mm -hmm. tonight, and um, hopefully there are parents out there who are who are watching and who are learning that um, dental care and oral care starts at, in the home, and taking your advice to heart and, and going to they're going to apply it. Mm -hmm. uh, where else can parents go uh, if they want, you know, if they want a, a specialized dental um, provider or, or oral care provider? Sure. Is there? I don't know if there are any websites or resources or what um, are the actual clinics? Yeah, de definitely the information is all over the internet. Um, mm -hmm. They can look at the Illinois State Dental Society website, the Chicago Dental Society website. The ADA might have uh, resources for them. Um, the Specialized Care Dentistry Association might have a list of people. Um, off the top of my head, I can say definitely the folks at Rockford, the Milestone Clinic, uh, people at Illinois Masonic, they have a um, dental residency program and they see a lot of special needs individuals as well. Um, people at Loyola, which is where I did my training. Um, but just even more than anything, if you can call your local pediatric dentist and call and tell them, you know, my child has such and such uh, condition, how comfortable are you seeing this individual? And, you know, find out if they're going to send you home with training materials or if they're going to send you home with a pair of gloves or a mirror. Mm -hmm. You know, all that, all that stuff would help you kind of pick someone to, um, That's great. To, to see your child. And then, you know, one of these days when we open up the clinic for the general public, obviously, so. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience this evening? Um, I really can't, I can't think of anything. <laughs> Just thank you for being here and glad I can help and, you know, for part of Autism Awareness Month. And certainly, all thank you. My pleasure. Great, great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we are just about out of time. If you could not get your question in tonight um, at uh, on Can TV, you are more than welcome to visit www.littlecity.org/autism. Again, that's www.littlecity.org/autism, and there you will see a host of services and resources for you. Uh, to the upper left, you can uh, submit your question. Uh, if you could not get it in to Dr. L, can I call you Dr. L? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we will forward it to him and make sure that he uh, gets to it right away. You can also watch any segments um, from previous weeks on Little City TV here on Can TV uh, by visiting that website. Or you could just email us at info at littlecity.org or call us directly at 847 221 7825. Uh, Little City Foundation is in the middle of an awareness campaign, Autism Awareness, the month of May and through a little bit of June. Take a look and uh, ride the CTA, the L, the Metro, or some billboards, some bulletins, and um, share, help spread the word and, and uh, increase the dialogue and help remove the stigma of autism. And hopefully, we can continue to work together Absolutely. and uh, work synergetically. And, come up with a cure and make this a better place for all the children and adults um, with autism today. Thank you for joining us and don't forget to tune in next week for another fascinating show on Little C TV here on Can TV 21 at 7.30. Thank you and have a great evening.